Good morning, hackers. It's DC here, and we're back with another video finally after a little break. Today, we're going to be covering can you become a cybersecurity pro while you're in high school? Okay, if you don't want to watch the rest of this video, the quick answer is yes, you can. <laughs> now, let me tell you exactly how. This actually comes off uh, multiple discussions with a guy in my Discord server who is mildly infamous for being like the youngest genius hacker pro that I've probably ever met. I give him like two years until he goes way past me in knowledge. But anyway, that's beside the point. And you know who you are, person. <laughs> so it sort of comes down to how much you apply yourself to doing anything. And you do something a hundred times, you're definitely a professional at it. The way I sort of see professionals is if you can make money from supplying that service or product or whatever it is, then pretty much you're a professional in that area. Beside the point of, you know, certifications and experience and stuff. Now, for example, if that guy who is uh, 14 or 15 years old now, definitely still in high school, was to apply for a job, off first glance, they would probably look at the certifications he has and say, no. In Australia, and I think most places, you don't have to put your age down, but obviously that will come across when you go to an interview on, you know, roughly how old you look. Now, how to become a cybersecurity professional while you're in high school sort of relates to, like I said before, how much you apply yourself to a different area of knowledge or, you know, piece of cybersecurity that you want to get into. Now, if sort of like web hacking or bug bounties or web apps or stuff like that is your thing, definitely start chasing down bug bounties. Find an XSS, get root on a system, you know, just go for that avenue and just keep diving in and hit up as many people who are already in that industry that you can sponge information off so that you can then get into that faster when you do then eventually finish school and you know either go to university or do some certifications. You've already got all that knowledge ready to go. Now, does that sort of make you a professional? Not really, but if you can manage to, you know, for example, find a bug bounty while you're in high school. I don't know how you would find the time, but some people are, you know, hyper aware or super smart. I definitely wasn't when I was in high school. But anyway, if they were to then get paid for a bounty they're then a professional bug bounty hunter. That's that's all my classification of a professional really is. As far as I'm aware, that's what most people classify a professional as, is someone who is providing a professional service. And if you've gotten paid for it before, all the better. There are other avenues, of course, like if you were to start supplying services to friends and families for securing their home networks, as a, a really basic example. You sell them a, a package service, for example, like a Raspberry Pi firewall with a, a, another Raspberry Pi with Pi hole on it or something like that. You're then sort of protecting their perimeter and supplying a service. So what you're doing there is packaging the whole service together and selling the two or three or however many Raspberry Pis with a little bit of extra on top. Add your time in against how long it took you to set up those systems and average it out to like an hour, an hour and a half of labor fee on top of that. And then your installation cost to go and install it on their network and confirm that everything is working. Now on the back of that, you can also supply a service of regular maintenance of those systems. So that's like a really basic example, but I've done that for my family before. And that's sort of how I originally started my first business with a computer shop it was just by setting up Wi-Fi because there wasn't really much in the way of firewalls back then, to be honest, I'm pretty old. I would then on the back of that install a management agent, like a, some sort of RMM solution or TeamView or something. So I could then be the first person that they think of when they want to call for a technical problem. So then I, I would remote into their computer because I'm lazy and I don't want to drive or go to people's houses. Remote in, fix the problem, send them a bill. <laughs> and I know like, you know, some family and friends will expect it for free and that's fine. You can provide it for free or maybe just ask for a beer or, you know, wine or whatever it is. But it's still a service and experience that you're providing that's going to give you more experience with dealing with these situations further down the line. And to be honest, things don't get much different from that apart from that they get more professional and the, you know, the systems that you're managing or protecting just become a little bit more complex. But once you build that base knowledge of how to 
you know, essentially roll out a, a system and protect it and then manage it later. That's all you really need to be a professional. Anyway, I hope this video uh, sort of makes sense and that you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next one. It's good to be back. I'll make some more videos soon. Catch you later, guys.